Hey there, movie buffs. Today, we're diving into the filmography of the talented and versatile actress, Rachel Wise. From dramas to comedies to action-packed thrillers, Rachel has showcased her incredible acting chops in a wide range of genres. So, grab some popcorn and get ready to count down the top 10 Rachel Wise movies of all time. Starting off our list at number 10 is The Fountain. Darren Aronofsky's The Fountain is a genre-defying film utilizing the talents of Wise and Hugh Jackman in a romance with three different storylines with three different characters over three different timelines. Confused yet? You should be, but the attraction that Wise's characters, a Spanish queen destined for a bad end, an annoying woman named Izzy, and a wife dying of a brain tumor, also improbably named Izzy, are intertwined with Jackman's roles, a conquistador, a space traveler, and a contemporary doctor respectively, to create a tapestry of mortality and everlasting love. Initially, many critics were baffled by the timelines, but Jackman and Wise kept audiences involved, and The Fountain has become a huge cult favorite since its release. Happening for a while. What? I've been losing sensitivity to hot and cold. Why didn't you tell me? Because I feel different inside. I feel different. Every moment. Coming in at number 9 is The Deep Blue Sea. Wise finally got the chance to work with acclaimed British director Terence Davies in this screen adaptation of the Terence Radigan play that focuses on Hester, Wise, the wife of a prominent judge, Simon Russell Beale, who embarks on a romantic affair with Freddie Page, Tom Hiddleston, a former pilot in the RAF. The affair leaves Hester drained to the point of attempting suicide, and as she recovers, she is still in despair, torn between facing a life that is sexually stimulating but emotionally reckless, and one which offers stability and love but lacks sexual passion. For her performance as Hester, Wise won the Best Actress Award from the New York Film Critics Circle and earned her second Golden Globe nomination. I love you so much. <laughs> Next up at number 8 is Youth. Ronit, Wise, is a successful photographer, and when her father dies, she goes back to the Orthodox Jewish community in London where she grew up. There, she spends time with Esty, Rachel McAdams, a friend and lover she had in her youth. While Esty has married a man and kept living in the community, Ronit now isn't afraid to show who she really is and who she lusts after. They rekindle their romance, though matters become even more complicated when Esty finds that she is pregnant. Wise is at the film center, conveying the complicated emotions of returning home to a community she's left, while trying to bottle up all the anger she has for them. At the same time, she's seized with sadness, fury and confusion from the death of her estranged father. Add that to her chemistry with Esty, as lustful and passionate as it comes, for someone who doesn't care about the consequences anymore, and Ronit proves to be one of the most dynamic characters Wise has ever played. Unsurprisingly, the actress proves she's up for the challenge, hitting it out of the park. You wanted to be Stravinsky, but you didn't have a single drop of his genius. Quiet, Melanie. Were the only two things you knew how to say. At number seven, we have Runaway Jury. A gripping legal drama directed by Gary Fletter, Runaway Jury is centered on a tricky trial concerning a workplace shooting and the gun manufacturer involved. It depicts the unfair fight between lawyer Wendell Rohr, Dustin Hoffman, and the conniving jury consultant Rankin Fitch, Gene Hackman, who's willing to push the boundaries of the law to win. Wise plays an important role in the courtroom movie as one of the jurors, Marley, who, along with her boyfriend Nicholas Easter, John Cusack, has the ability to persuade the jury into a decision. Marley shines as an intellectual yet mysterious character, 
whose real motives aren't revealed until the very end. And the biggest case in the year. You're kidding me. No. How much do you think it's worth? 15 million, maybe more. Taking the number six spot is disobedience. Chilean director Sebastián Lelio followed up his Oscar-winning A Fantastic Woman with this English-language romance set in North London. Rav Krushka, who leads an Orthodox Jewish congregation suddenly dies while addressing his flock, and his estranged daughter Ronit, Wise, a successful New York photographer, must fly back home to tend to his affairs. There she stays with her father's follower David Cooperman, Alessandro Nivola, and his wife Esti, Rachel McAdams, to whom Ronit is physically attracted. Wise does a superb job of creating a complex character who was once part of the Orthodox world, left it for secular success, and must temporarily return to it as a changed woman and one who now acts on her sexual impulses. Why else would I be here? Hello, Esty. Halfway through our list at number five is the whistleblower. In 1999, Nebraska police officer Catherine Bokovac is recruited as a peacekeeper for the United Nations and assigned to a private contractor, Democra Security, in post-war Bosnia. When she uncovers a human trafficking ring linked to employees of Democra, she's ignored by other authorities and pushed to go to extreme lengths to expose those responsible and the corrupted company. The whistleblower is based on the real-life experiences of human rights investigator Catherine Bokovac, who was fired for trying to shut down a human trafficking ring and successfully sued her employer for wrongful termination. Critics praised Wise for her solid performance as the no-nonsense investigator who despite the odds, is undeterred in her efforts of seeking justice. I'll get you the rest of your files back from IA, you get them out of here, take them public. But this will never see the light of day. I can't leave this. Coming in at number four is about a boy. Will Hugh Grant is a wealthy, amateur bachelor who invents an imaginary son as a way to meet women at single parent meetings. During one of his meetings, he winds up meeting a 12-year-old boy named Marcus, Nicholas Holt, who is having a hard time fitting in at school. As the two start to become friends, Will helps Marcus overcome his problem and finally learns that it's time to grow up. About a Boy is a heartwarming romantic comedy that was listed as one of the top 10 best movies of the year by the American Film Institute. Wise plays the first woman Will has a serious interest in dating, Rachel, and instead of following the traditional Hollywood formula, about a boy chooses to show the honest and messy reality that comes with building a significant relationship with others. Ali didn't get along with the last bloke. He was a liar! All right, darling, he... Breaking into the top three is the favorite. While England and France are at war, the frail queen and Olivia Coleman is dotted on hand and foot by her friend, Lady Sarah, who also governs the country in the Queen's place. When Sarah's socially disgraced cousin, Abigail, Emma Stone, is hired as a scullery maid, the two women ruthlessly compete to become the Queen's court favorite. The Favorite is a comical period film that reunited Wise with the lobster director, Yorgos Lanthimos and earned 10 Academy Award nominations including Best Picture and Best Supporting Actress for both Wise and Stone. Wise described the film to IndieWire as a funnier, sex-driven take on the classic Betty Davis film, All About Eve, that also explores the film's similar double standards of powerful women. Yeah? <gasps> if you forget to load the pellet. The gun fires, makes a sound, but releases no shot. It is a great jape, do you agree? At number two, we have The Lobster. Wise's first collaboration with writer-director Yorgos Lanthimos resulted in a film that raised Lanthimos' profile in America from Greek eccentric to a director one needs to take seriously. And as darkly comic as the Oscar-nominated script by Lanthimos, 
and if Thymus Philippa may be, it gives wise a jewel of a role as a short-sighted woman, not in life but in vision, who has escaped a hotel in which those who are still single at a certain age must, by order of the state, be transformed into an animal of their choice if they don't find love within forty-five days. Luckily, she does in the form of nerdy David, Colin Farrell, who himself suffers from short-sightedness, and they plan to escape together. It doesn't quite work out that way, but Wise is so good in the role that it is little wonder that Lanthimos wanted to cast her again. Kiwi. That's right. Ten out of ten, again. Can I give you a kiss? And finally, taking the number one spot on our list is the constant gardener. Wise won her first Academy Award, her first Golden Globe, and her first Screen Actors Guild Award for her performance as Tessa Abiquail, an activist for Amnesty International who was mysteriously murdered while stationed in Kenya. Tessa's story is told in flashbacks through the memories of her husband Justin, Ralph Fiennes, a diplomat and gardening enthusiast who has resolved to find her murderer. While it's not every day of the week that a performance only seen in flashbacks wins the Academy Award, but Wise makes every moment count here. She makes us wonder about her character, who is Tessa really? But the palpable love that she has for Justin lingers over every frame. Even if we don't see her, Wise's Tessa is always there. Beautiful work. Anyway, it was a very dull lecture. It was a dull lecture, and, uh, even so I shouldn't have... <laughs> look, can I... Can I buy you a coffee, or...? I owe you a drink. Come All on. right, you can buy me a... And there you have it, folks. The top 10 Rachel Wise movies of all time. Whether you're a fan of dramas, comedies, or thrillers, Rachel's diverse filmography has something for everyone. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and enjoy the magic of Rachel Wise on the big screen.